Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. What an atmosphere of worship. All morning long, I hear you call greatest missing links in so many people's lives is that overwhelming sense of reason and purpose. See, life doesn't make sense unless there is a reason, unless there is a purpose. That overwhelming, undergirding thing that you have. In 41 years of ministry, the number one prayer request that I've heard from people in in all of my ministry has always been the same thing. The number one request, I want to know God's will for my life. What does, what does God have for me to do? It's got to be something more than just Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, punch the clock, go to the house, and do it again tomorrow. There's got to be more than that. You can always tell the difference in people who live with purpose and the people who live with questions. When you live with a purpose, it doesn't matter what's happening around you. All that matters is what's happening within you. you that, that guide that you have that leads you forward. The vision is a clear mental picture of a preferred future toward which you are always moving. I, I'm not just tripping over these little things that are in front of me right now because I know I'm going somewhere. This morning, I, I don't know who that's for. I don't know. I, maybe just me. <laughs> Can I pray the blessing of God over your life this morning? Closed hands never received an open blessing. If you don't mind, just symbolically open your hands. Just, Father, I bless your people. Right in this moment, before we do anything else, God, with open hands, we receive a spoken blessing over our lives. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, Father, over every life, I speak life. Father, I cancel, come on, I cancel every assignment that the enemy has brought against each of these people in here. No weapon formed against you will prosper. The weapon will be formed, but it will not prosper in Jesus' name. That overwhelming sense of uselessness and hopelessness will be broken in Jesus' name. You have reason, you have purpose. God has a plan, and you are in it. Father, today I speak a blessing over your people, and I pray, God, that you would take them from where they are to right where you want us to be. In Jesus' name, have your way, Holy Spirit, have your way. And we give you our praise. And they said together, amen. amen. Take two minutes and act like you like one another. Just say hello to one another. Around you. Go ahead and... I didn't say do, hey, I didn't say all that. I just said, thank you, John. <laughs> While they're doing that, those of you that are online, I never want to forget where you are and who you are. Let us know where you're watching from, who you are, how we can pray for you and how we can bless you. I'm sure we've got a lot of people online this morning, so we're glad to have you there with us. Let us know where you are and how we can bless you. For those of you that are in the building, the young guy will be back next week. I know y'all are looking for the young, handsome guy. And all you, <laughs> and all you see is me. Glad to have you with us in church this morning. Before we do anything else, I I just want to say we have got so much to be thankful for. We really do. There are people who don't believe in miracles. Those are sad people. I believe in miracles. Last week when that storm was coming, where it was going to, you know, there was, we, we don't, in this church, we don't pray, let it miss us and hit somebody else. We don't pray like that. Right? Because that's just not right. That's just not, oh, kill all our neighbors. We'll be all right. We'll pray for you. We, we never do that. But we prayed, and many of you agreed with us in prayer that the storm would diminish. That's my prayer, that this storm would just... And people who don't believe in miracles say, well, meteorological conditions prevailing, and the, the light winds, and the cold winds, and the... Shush. I believe in miracles. I believe that there were a lot of people on their knees praying. and that, So that storm didn't do all that it was supposed to, thank God. There are still people that got crunched, and we, we still need to be working with them and doing what we can. But thank God for answered prayer. I just felt like this morning we had so much to be thankful for, to just say thank you. We still have people that we're praying for in other places of the country. So continue to do that. Continue to serve and give. Um, we have a, a friend of ours who works for the uh, city fire department, Mike Gallatin, is going to be taking a, a loaded trailer this week to North Carolina. We have some supplies already here in the kitchen. Uh, There were very specific things. So sometime this week, contact us, Kelsey, and see 
what they can take and what is, is good for them. Um, next weekend, I'll be in, Kathy and I will be in Ocean Isle, North Carolina, where I've, where I've been going for many years. But then I've been invited, surprisingly enough, to go up a little bit further up into the mountains up there to... Uh, <clears throat> See some friends of mine that are that are going through it. So um, y'all pray that, that that those people get the help they need. Uh, you know we can never forget when I when I wake up and I've got lights and air. Not everybody does. Not everybody does. Some people don't even have a house to go back to. So a lot to be thankful for. And I don't ever take any of it lightly. So y'all y'all pray for me. I get emotional when I think about people hurting. I think God has me in this season of my life right now um, so that I have the freedom to do that. Uh, I'm so thankful for young Jared coming in and filling the spot that he's filling in so it gives me time to do stuff like that. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Y'all, y'all ought to pray a blessing over your young pastor and believe that God's going to bless him a lot. Amen? It's just the very beginnings of it. While I'm on that. While I'm on that this week for things to pray about, Revival Night is happening Wednesday night right here, 6 o'clock, no no time limit. So don't come in here expecting 6 to 6.30 and then 7 to 7.30. Jared, that boy's going to just lay it out. So we're looking forward to it. If you'd like to come to Revival Night, you can come and stay as long as you'd like to leave. Leave when you need to, but we're we're going to have a good time. Fasting and prayer is important for that. So sometime this week, push back from the dinner table. Fast a little bit. Fast and pray that God would do something amazing in this, in this time together we have on Wednesday night. Next Saturday, the 4S, our homeless ministry, their yard sale is going to be happening in the event room out there. Come by and get some stuff and support that ministry. They've been, y'all been giving away a lot of stuff lately. So much stuff that's going out through that. So support that ministry if you will. One last item. Uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Um, so let me say this about that. Uh, Thankfully, Kathy and I have been here for 40 years. Uh, She and I have been loved on and loved by you for 40 years. Your love and your expressions of appreciation have meant everything to us, still mean everything to us. Uh, But at this this juncture of of where I am in my walk, we don't don't want y'all to focus any attention on us. Here's what I would love to see y'all do while, while they're not here, I can say it. Uh, focus a lot of your love and attention and prayers on Jared and Kelsey. Can you do that? Do that. Come on, do that. Love them. If you want to give and support to them, do that. If you want to buy them a gift card somewhere, do that. Kathy and I, we're old. We don't need it. I can go to Burger King on my own all by myself. Take good care of them, if you will. Amen? I haven't preached in a little while, so I've forgotten how to do it. If you have your Bible, open with me to Psalms chapter 30. As I said once again, Pastor will be back next week, continuing his series on the book of Jude. Looking forward to that. In honor of the word, would you mind standing with me together one more time as we read together in Psalms chapter 30. I'm going to start in verse 1, and I'm going to be reading from uh, the New Living Translation today. I just love the way this is worded. Whatever translation you have is fine. Psalms chapter 30, verse 1, from the lips of David, I will exalt you, Lord, for you have rescued me. You refused, huh, come on, God, to let my enemies triumph over me. You got a bad God. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. There shouldn't be a closed lip in the house as we worship. Verse 5, and the focus, for his anger lasts only a moment. But his favor lasts a lifetime. Mm. Weeping may endure through the night, but joy. I like it when y'all do that. But joy comes in the morning. Mm. Reasonably sure that you've been in church for any length of time. You are familiar somehow with those verses. You may not know that all. You may not know the context. You may not know that all. But most specifically in verse 5. Because those are some of the most quoted words that I've heard in my life as I've gone through ministry. Uh, His anger lasts a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. But most specifically, the last part of that, weeping endures for the night. But joy comes in the morning. 
This morning, I want to speak into your life in, in, in a different way that I pray will be a blessing to you and answer some of the questions that you have had or you might still be having. You may have pulled into the parking lot this morning with some questions in your head that you're dealing with things in life that you don't understand. And the importance of that is this, that we are right now living in a time when questions abound. In fact, a lot of people right now are experiencing something that they've never experienced in their lifetime, and it's this, that they are living their lives right now with more question marks than exclamation points. That's not how you're supposed to live. You see, there, there have been times in life when you've had some questions, but most of the time you can look around the, the totality of your life and see reasons to be happy. You can see exclamation points. Ah, oh, God is good. Things are turning and it's happening. But there are a lot of people right now that are living right now in this season with way too many question marks and not quite enough exclamation points. The word for today is this. Your story is not over until you are laughing in the places where you are crying right now. I don't know how they're going to fit that on a label. <laughs> it ain't going to fit. It's going to look silly. But what a word. Your story is not over until you are laughing at the things that you are crying about right now. In fact, let's just get radical. Put your hand on your chest. Just, just, just humor me. My story is not over until I'm laughing at the hell that is being thrown at me right now. My story is not over until I'm laughing at every last thing the devil is doing at me right now. Weeping may endure for the night, ah, but joy is going to come in my morning. Father, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. Let your word be heard today, and we thank you for it. And they said, amen. amen. Please be seated. Thank you for your honor. We all do it, even though we probably will not in good company admit that we do. We all are involved in a little activity sport called people watching. <laughs> Come on, y'all. We, 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 we won't admit to it, but we, we all do it. I'm from law enforcement. I come from a law enforcement background, so I'm watching everybody. All of y'all in here that snuck in this morning with a sidearm, I see you. I know where you are. Got one eye on each of you, especially him. My Kathy is the same, but she does it a lot more, more than I do. She is an expert at people watching, no matter where we are or what we're doing. One thing I know is that as an ex-cop, I always like to sit with my back to a wall, not to the door, but she don't care. She's going to sit where she can see the most people at the most time to watch everybody moving. And, and this, this needs to be said, not in a bad way. A lot of times people, when they're people watching, they're a little snarky, they're a little snidey, but... We don't do it like that. We just truly love to see people in, in life, and, and, and we've done that forever. We just watch, we watch people wherever we are. A few weeks ago, we were in um, Fort Worth, we went to Fort Worth, Texas, to go to the stockyards. Uh, it was a great time and a few days and trips and, and so many people. And in one of those days, we were somewhere watching just an ocean of people move around. It was wonderful, man. People from all over the world that come there to that little area just to watch the bulls and, and be a part of all that. And two things while I was watching all that, two things struck me all at once. Number one, watch this, was the creativity of God. I looked around at all of those people and I, and I wondered to myself, how in the world does God do that? Have you ever? No, even in a room like this, you look around this room, the creativity of God is amazing to me. I don't know how he does it. It only seems like you got so much that you can do with hair, so much that you can do with eyes, so much that you can do with facial features, but God, the creativity of God is manifested in this that they, none of us, thank God, looks like anybody else in here. We all look different. We all have this crazy, just this individuality about us. It's the creativity of God. It's just, I sat there and I thought, how do you do that? The second thing I thought was this, was that even though we are all so different, that we come from all of these different cultures and these countries and these regions, so many of our life experiences, with, with some obvious exceptions, are remarkably the same. We think not, but we, we think different people from different countries live in different ways and have different experiences that we do. They don't. Right. It's remarkably the same. So for today, I'm just going to keep it to this that we can all relate to, and I'm going to package it like this. Here it is. 
in a little packageable form. Good and bad things happen to good and bad people. That's as, that's as boiled down as you can make it. We all have, listen, good days and bad days. We all. We all have highs and we all have lows. We all have mountains and we all have valleys. All of us. That Instagram account don't tell you all of it. We all have highs and lows, goods and bads. We have wins and losses. All of it. And, and even though we are all, listen, remarkably different. Red, brown, yellow, black, white, rich, poor, young, old, short, tall, skinny, anointed. Even though we, we all, <laughs> one thing that is consistent is that life Life, in all of its forms, brothers and sisters, is going to happen. Good and bad is coming. In Matthew chapter 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, verse 45, Jesus said, He makes it rain on the just and on the unjust. It all is going to happen. And the point is that life happens. Trials come. Troubles come. Sometimes it's a little Thank God. Sometimes it's a lot. Sometimes it's not too much. Sometimes it's just way too much. Sometimes it's just all spread out over time, and I can deal with it. I can, I can navigate it. You know, yesterday may have been a little trial, but, uh, you know, today I, I feel a little better. I think I'm going to be. And then other times it comes in like a flood of trouble that comes in all at once, and, and when that starts to happen, it, this is, this is the, the, the same communality that we have, is that you can start wondering, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do to get this? What did I do to deserve this? And, and when it keeps happening, you start to wonder, the second question, when's this ever going to stop? What did I do? Because I must have done something. I must have made Zeus mad. I don't know, but I, I've done something. And then what, when, when's it going to stop? Many years ago, I was in a season like that. And as the days went on, I started to wonder, you know, okay, what did I do and when's this going to be over? And, and, and you know, I'd, I'd have a time and we all do where, you know, it gets a little better and then, bam, something else would happen. And then you go on for a little while and, it, you know, it works all right and things are going, and then, bam, something else comes along, and, 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 and it went on in my life. It went on for so long that eventually it got ridiculous. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it got so ridiculous that when something else would happen, I would actually start to laugh because of how ridiculous it was. Like, you walk out, and you got a flat tire, and you go, come on now. And it, you just, you, you're walking out, and you step in the dog's business in the yard, and, we, and I don't even have a dog. Come on! Like, it's a, at some point, at some point in that, thankfully, it turned out to be the, near the end of it. And that's the challenge of trials is that you never really know when the end of it is going to be. So that's why you just keep going. It happened one day that I was listening to one of my favorite preachers who's gone on now. He's gone on to, to be with the Lord. He was one of my favorite preachers that whenever I, whenever I could, I would listen. And the reason I listened to him was because he preached with such conviction and such passion. He never phoned it in. What a guy. He never phoned it in. You know, it's just another Sunday, just another sermon. We'll just get this done and, and go on. No. Nah. It never mattered what he was speaking on. He spoke about it like it was the most important thing on the earth. Kind of like our young preacher does. He spoke about it was like the most important thing on this earth, as every preacher should. And it may not be this way for you, but it certainly has become this way for me that so much of contemporary preaching that I'm listening to today, and I've been listening to it for a long time, so much of it today is offensive to me. It's offensive to me not for the reason that you think it's offensive to me because as I'm sitting there listening to it, I don't know if I'm listening to a TED Talk, a motivational speech, or a comedy club. And, and all three of them tick me off. Because it shouldn't be like that. The Bible says that when we speak, the Word of God literally says that we speak the oracles of God. 
Which means that in this, even in this moment right here, as I am uttering the word, it is supposed to be that I am uttering the utterances of God, and that should have power and anointing on it. The preacher is meant to be inspired of and by the Holy Spirit of God. Wise men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. I can feel it more and more as I get closer to the end of the road that I don't know how many more of these words that I've got left in me or how many more words I've got to deliver. So I, for me, with every word that I speak, including today, brothers and sisters, I'm going to speak life. I'm going to exalt Jesus, and I'm going to call people to repent and get right with God before it's too late. That's it. So on this day, I was, I was in a season, and I heard a word from him, and that message I know was orchestrated just entirely for me, like this one will probably be for someone in here. It was a word, like God was speaking right into my soul. He spoke from Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. The end of a thing is better than its beginning. Hot dog. Should have said hallelujah, but I went with hot dog. The message that he preached was something 20 years ago that I had never heard. Now it's common, but I had never heard anyone say that before. And if y'all have been here with me for any length of time, you've heard me say it a lot. And it's this. He said, if it's not better, it's not over. Huh. It never matters what the trial is. All that matters is how great God is. It never, it never matters what trial it is that comes at you. The only thing that truly matters is how great your God is. And that day... That day, that word became a revelation to me, and I still get excited about it because it changed my life, and I'm praying to God that it will change yours. Because up until that moment, I saw troubles in a certain way, probably the same way that we all do. That when I looked at the troubles that came into my life, somehow I reasoned within me that some of it must have been my fault. I must have done something. I must have deserved this. I must have... I must have done something to deserve this, or I just accepted it. Okay, troubles, that's just a part of life. I just accepted it and hope and pray that it would be over. But in that word, that day, I'm still excited about it. He said, no matter what happens, no matter what evil befalls you, no matter how good or how evil it seems to be, no matter how tragic or destructive, up to and including death, your own death, even if you die at the end of it, the sign and the signal that it is over, and most importantly, that your God reigns in heaven is this, that the end of it has to be better than it was when you went into it, because if it is not better, then and it is not over. Until there is a blessing that has come out of it, your trial is not over. Until there is a breakthrough. Come on, I'm shouting better than y'all are. Until there is a breakthrough. Until there is a turnaround. Until light is shining brightly into the darkness that has surrounded you in that place. Until joy has taken the place of your depression until every tongue that has risen up against you has been shut up until your enemies are your footstool until the windows of heaven have opened up wide enough that you don't have room to receive the blessing that you can receive the way that you are going to know that it is over is when it gets better and when it turns around until <laughs> When you finally see that what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around and made it a blessing in your life. He turned it and made it a blessing. Here's my favorite part. When your enemies stop laughing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I said it. Somewhere you right now, y'all got people smirking at your troubles. Yeah. Well, you know what? I figured someday it was going to come around to them. <laughs> when your enemies stop laughing, because there ain't nothing for them to laugh at. When the blessing starts flowing, 
and nobody can deny that the blessing has come back all over your life. When you finally are able to laugh in the places where you are crying right now, that's when you're going to know. Come on, somebody. I'm going to take a minute. I I know y'all are not used to long preaching, so I'm going to take a minute this morning. (laughs) I'm here to untangle something. I was raised on a fishing boat. My daddy was a fisher. Nothing worse than tangled monofilament line. Daddy would hand you a big ball of it like that and say, untangle that. I'm here to untangle something. Because in too many people's lives, it's, it's done gotten twisted. The way that I know it's twisted is because you have accepted the switch. Right now, right now, you are crying in places where you were laughing. And that's messed up. That's the twist. That's messed up because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so when you find yourself in those seasons where there is no joy... The only other part of that equation that's coming is no strength. You are weak. It may have happened gradually so you didn't notice it. But now you are not laughing. You haven't drawn joy out of that well of salvation for quite some time. You're going through the motions. Maybe you're bitter. Maybe you're angry. Maybe right now, this is going to ring true. It may be just one person in this room, and I hope to God you hear me, but you're crying in places where you used to laugh. You're crying in your home. And your home used to be the place where laughter filled the atmosphere. But now you cry. You're crying In places where you used to laugh. Maybe you used to laugh in your family, but right now your family is not getting along. And and people aren't speaking, and it's hard. You're not together. You're not like you were. You're you're crying in places where you used to laugh in your church. Church is not like it was. It's not like it was before. It's, It's somehow shifting. In your country, you look at the country, and we've always had a reason to say God has been good to America, but... I don't know if I'm blind or not, but I'm looking at my country right now and I'm seeing a lot more reasons to cry than I am to rejoice. We're crying in places that we used to laugh. One of the the most powerful revelations in all of the Bible is the book of Job. The book of Job. People run from it, but people don't look at it like, oh, heck no, I'm not reading that. Because if I read it, it might happen to me. There was no one, there is no one like Job in in all of the Bible. That boy was blessed, y'all. He was rich before rich was even a word. He was Bill Gates rich. He was Elon Musk rich. He was off the charts rich. There wasn't nobody like him. He was rich. There was no one like Job. Blessed. Oh, in church we have to say blessed. We can't say rich. (laughs) Well, I want y'all to be blessed and rich. I want all of y'all. In fact, fact, will you receive it? Will you receive it? I want you to be blessed and I want you to be rich. I want to preach to a congregation of millionaires. So y'all can tithe. So, so watch this. Do it now. Because I'm not going to pray for you to get rich until you learn how to do it. Uh-huh. But then you know the story of Job. His entire life falls apart. Trials come. Things happen. Enemies show up. Masquerading as his friends. Job even loses it all himself and curses the day of his birth. I've never been that mad. He cursed the day that he was born. But then, as you know, in the story, God shows up. God has a way, y'all. God has a way. Let me say it another way. God has a day that God's going to show up and God's going to turn it around. Because he did. He showed up. You know the story that by the time it was all over, not only had Brother Job been restored, but the Bible is also very clear to point out that by the time the restoration was over, y'all get ready to shout, he had received twice as much as he had before. So when you go through troubles, you need to claim that same promise. That before this is over, I'm going to have double for my trouble. One of the, one of the distinctives of chronic trouble. And for those of you educated in the St. Augustine school system, the word chronic (laughs) means 
trouble that just keeps happening. Chronic trouble. One of the problems with chronic trouble is that eventually you start, listen to this, even though you don't, didn't mean to, you start to adjust and you start to accept it. Right. People who walk with a limp, that you didn't always walk with a limp, but someday you just finally accept it. Okay, well, that's just, that's, I'm going to have to accept that. The problem with chronic trouble is that you just adjust to it and you start to accept it. You start to think, well, maybe that's just the way it is. Maybe I deserve that. Sometimes they completely yield to it. Okay, I'm just, I can't fight against this anymore, so I've just got to accept it. Sometimes with chronic trouble, I hope I'm preaching to somebody this morning, you start to scale down your life to accept these new circumstances. You know, at one time, at one time I thought the sky was the limit. There's nothing that God can't do. There's nothing that I can't do. I can be anything that I want to be. I can do anything that I want to do. Nothing better get in my way because I'm going to mow it down on my way to get there. But, but somehow as you go on in your life, you start to adjust to a new kind of reality. It says, well, I'll just scale my life down to fit into this little circle that I'm in right now. What I mean is you start to accept less than you were supposed to accept before. Anybody hear what the preacher's saying this morning? Some people go to the ultimate reality and end their lives. See, every suicide you ever hear about or read about was not a person that was always suicidal. They just one day woke up and said, okay, today. And they end their lives. But then there are others who take all of that and I'm one of those, and turn it into revelation. Where's your Bible at? Your Bible never needs to be very far from you. You need to have it not only in your hand, but in your heart. Psalms chapter 30. There, there was some question as to what was the occasion of Psalms chapter 30. Some say that it was written in regard to the, the dedication of David's house, his crib, the, the house that David built for himself, uh, others say it was given at the dedication of the temple, that not David's house, but the house of God, the, the temple that David prepared for and Solomon eventually built. Either way, it was an absolute celebration that David wanted no glory in. As you read Psalms chapter 30, you can start to see that David wanted no glory in any of it, but all he wanted to do was give all glory to God. Never miss an opportunity to give God glory. Even right now in this moment, say amen. Never miss an opportunity to give God glory. Sometimes you just need to look at your circumstances, no matter what they are, and say, no matter how it looks, it could always be worse. God is always going to find a way to make this somehow better. But I like to believe that it happened at the dedication of the temple, or in contemporary language, the dedication of the church house. Because I'm a church guy. Anybody with me? I like church. Nothing? Y'all all just went silent like you were sitting in the church of Satan. What are you? I love church. I grew up loving church. That's why I say we should be here. All these people saying, I don't need it. I found a better way. I feel God on my boat. <laughs> okay. We got our own thing going on. The church is his bride. I'm going to make somebody mad, but it's on purpose. How can you say that you love him, but you don't love his bride? Hello. The real-time application of this word should be instantly recognized by everyone. If you all have it for the screens, you can put it on Psalms chapter 30, verse 1. David says, I will exalt you, Lord, for you have rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You have kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. Why? Verse 5, because his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Ah, somebody should preach that sometime, too. But then this, this, this final thing, this benediction, weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. The reality is this, brothers and sisters, that none of us are exempted from trouble. That's a reality. 
oh, I'm a good boy. I, I live right. I say my prayers. I eat my vitamins. It's still coming. It's still coming. The last several years of my life, I have seen more trouble than I've ever seen in my entire lifetime. Anybody else? Maybe just talking out of my own experience here, and if that is so, just accept it for what it is. But I've seen more trouble in the last few years of my life than I've ever seen in my 62 years of living. Not only in mine, but in the people around me. I look around at folks that are just dealing with so much mess that I, I have a hard time rectifying it. So much depression. Hidden up so well, so well. Depressed, so depressed to the point of barely being able to function in your day, but you put on that fake smile and you go on out and you do it anyway. Anxiety. So much anxiety that I see in people's lives. I'm I'm a clinical counselor. I, I talk to people suffering with anxiety. It's right behind their eyes. Consuming their every thought, brokenness like I've never seen. In the last several years, our world has been see, what seems like in a constant state of upheaval. I say it jokingly, but every morning you open up Facebook to see who I'm supposed to be mad at today. What am I supposed to be mad about today? In the last several weeks, many people in our country have had their world turned upside down and torn completely apart. Storms. You ever heard of a flood in the mountains? It don't flood in mountains. It floods in St. Augustine. It don't flood in Chimney Rock, North Carolina. It doesn't happen. Sickness that we've never seen before. I won't even use the C word because it makes me mad. Disease. Recently, I've sat with people who literally, literally cannot believe the mess that's going on in their own life. One of my best friends... One of my best friends, he's younger than I am, is suffering from chronic heart failure. His heart is literally dying on the inside of him. And I sit with him and he says, I don't even know why. I don't know what happened. What did it, I've never been ill. I'm just dying. Another night, a few nights ago, I sat with a friend of mine who had cancer 20 years ago. And now those symptoms, the same symptoms that he was experiencing before, are creeping back into his life. And he's terrified. That is this it? Is this back? Is this going to kill me this time? People are openly wondering what is happening in our country. People are openly, openly wondering what is going to happen in their country and in their community. And I came to deliver a word. And then I'm going to shut up and go home. And the word is this, that in all of this, brothers and sisters, never let these circumstances cause you to forget this, get ready to shout that God is still on his throne, that God Almighty is still God. He reigns over all that there is. And I declare to you the word that became a revelation to me, and it's this, the end of a thing is better than its beginning. If it is not better, then it is not over. I know that sometimes it seems like you have more troubles than you have triumphs. I know how that feels. You don't want to answer your email because you know there's something else. You wonder what's happening with your business. Sometimes it seems like you've got more enemies than friends. Come on, where y'all at? More setbacks than steps forward. More breakdowns than breakthroughs. More reasons in your life to give up than to go on. But let this word hit a whole lot different than it did before a storm came along and took your power out for a few days. Now you think you're living in a third world country because you couldn't shower for three days. (laughs) Been there, done that. Before those symptoms started happening again, before your friends walked away and never said goodbye, before your roof started leaking, the word of God declares that weeping endures for the night, but joy, somebody say amen, joy comes in the morning. I came in here this morning for one reason, to stand on the Word of God and to declare to you that the day will come when you will be laughing in the very places that you are crying in right now. You may feel like nothing is happening but tears flowing down your face, but I'm telling you, according to the Word of God, before this thing is over, you will be dancing in the very same places that you are brokenhearted in right now. You will be laughing at the calamity when it comes your way. I wanted you to become so convinced of that that nothing can change your mind. Why are you shouting at me, Pastor? Because you're used to it. 
I want you to become so convinced of it that nothing will change your mind. You're going to walk out of church and go, oh, we had a great time in church today. Then some drunk fool is going to rear-end you and total your car and mess your neck up. You'll be like, well, God lost. God forgot me. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. I want it to become real to y'all so that y'all can say, hey, to every one of your... your woo, woo, every one of your enemies, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, anybody know the rest of it? I will arise. See, I, I, I probably will fall, but I will get back up. Say, how can you be, how can you be so sure, Pastor? Because God's word says it. Amen. And we I, and we are serving a God who cannot lie. Hold on, I just made my own self happy. Woo! That don't happen often, but it just happened. If it's not better, it's not over, it's not just a cute little saying. Oh, that's so cute. Write that down. I like how he says that. It's not just a cute little saying. What it is is an expression, listen to me, of submission to the sovereignty of God. Amen. And in a crazy world that like we live in right now, that's the only thing that makes sense. You don't need to be submitting to your feelings. You don't need to be submitting to your government. You need to be submitting to the sovereignty of the God that cannot fail because that's the only thing that will stand because if, if there is going to be a turnaround and there is, God is the one that's going to turn it around. Amen. Ever been in a situation where you, no matter what you did, you couldn't make it better? Good. Good. It's good when you are neck deep in a situation like that where nothing you can do makes it any better. Because then the only out that you have is God. If there's a way out of this, and there is, God is the one that's going to make a way. I want to prophesy to you, and then I'm going to go home and eat a ham sandwich. <laughs> God is going to show up. Amen. God is going to show up. Y'all, come on. You say, I'm so tired of being broken. I'm so tired of being broken. So tired of being broken. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Amen. He's near you. He's right there with you. Amen. The good thing about him being near is that sometimes all you can work up is a whisper. You ever been that hurt? Oh, God. I can't even speak it because nobody will understand it. But I can whisper, God, help me. And since the Lord is near, he can hear that. You say, I'm so tired of crying. I wish I could make it through one sermon without crying. I've always hated it. It's embarrassing. I don't cry any other time. That's not true. It's a total lie. I cry a lot. I was watching a James Bond movie a couple days ago and cried. I was like, oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. You know, when they killed him at the end of the last one, I was like, are you serious? But then I heard he got paid $50 million for the next show he was in, and I felt a lot better that he was dead. <laughs> okay, back to the sermon. You say, I'm so tired of crying. You ever been there? You feel like you're just dehydrated because you just cry, 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 cry. Did you know that your Bible says tears are a language that God understands? I didn't, I didn't know that for a long time. Tears are a language that God understands. In Psalms 56, 
It, the, the Bible literally says that he keeps their tears in a bottle. That's incredible. It's incredible. He keeps our tears. If you still can't get through it, remember this. That all of this, listen to your old man pastor. The young guy will be back next week. All of this is just for a little while. It's just a little while. I remember the first day of first grade. And now I'm 62 years old. Woo! Our light affliction which is but for a moment, doth work a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The ultimate fulfillment of this that I'm preaching to you this morning, and this is the last word, and we're going to pray. The ultimate fulfillment of this is going to happen in heaven. That's the ultimate fulfillment. Say, how is that, Pastor? That weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Because according to Revelation chapter 21, the Bible says that in heaven, he will wipe away all tears. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more sorrow. Weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I speak this over your life, that your story is not over until you are laughing in the places where you were crying before. Father, we pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray your glory falls here in this place this morning because we need you. Lord, we need you today. So we pray, come, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in this place. Let this word, let this word right here be a well. Let this word this morning be the fulfillment of Psalms 84, that even though when you are passing through the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, you will make it a well. So in that well, we will draw water with joy from the well of salvation. Heads bowed, hearts open. Very simple invitations this morning. If this word has spoken something into your life, I want you to come find a place to pray. If depression has become a problem in your life, I want you to come and find a place to pray. If you are right now crying in places that you once laughed in, then that needs to change. I'm calling for some honesty in here this morning. If you are crying right now in places that you used to laugh in, then quickly see with me how the enemy has turned your circumstances around. The Bible says that weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. It is not that joy endures for the night, but weeping comes in the morning. You're not supposed to. You're not meant to live with more question marks than exclamation points. You're meant to be marked by joy. So this morning, people that are in that situation, whether that's at your home, whether that's at your family, whether that's at your work, whether it's in your relationship, your husband, wife, marital relationship, whether it's at your church, whether it's in your community, find a place this morning to pour your heart out to God. I don't want anybody to walk out of here this morning until you have claimed that promise from God. Weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. My story is not over until I am laughing in the places where I'm crying right now. Father, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Restore it. There's a work of restoration that needs to happen in here this morning. Restore to me the joy. We take authority. Ah, over every lie of the devil. Over every principality and power. Over every spirit of depression. Over every spirit of anxiety. Over every spirit of division. We take authority over it and curse it and cast it to the ground. We pray 
that the Spirit of the Lord would be in this room because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Father, I'm praying that the stronghold of depression would be broken. I'm praying that the stronghold of anxiety would be broken. I'm praying this morning in the name of Jesus that freedom would come flooding back into people's lives. With every head bowed and every heart open, I'm not just talking to everyone else. I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters. Weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Your story is not over until you are laughing in the places where you're crying in right now. That start to turn around when you cast those cares on him, when you take that burden to the Lord. Give that burden to the Lord and he will, it's old fashioned, it's an altar call. We don't apologize for that. You find a place to pray, you pour your heart out to God. You might even cry a tear or two. God will take those tears off that altar and put them in his bottle. He will keep those. This morning, I asked you at the beginning to put your hand on your chest and say, the day will come when I will laugh at all the hell that is happening in my life right now. The children have gone wild. Your marriage has gone sour. Your business is hanging on by a thread. This economy is choking the life out of people. 2,000 people coming through our food pantry every week just to sustain their cupboards. And you look me in the face and tell me our country is doing well, you pitiful liar. People are struggling. The government is not our source. God is our source. Jehovah Jireh is our source. So this morning, in the name of Jesus, I want some people to cast some cares on the Lord today. Find a place to pray. If the altar fills up and you can't get there, wait a minute. Give the opportunity. The altar workers, you're not speaking anything this morning but life. You're laying hands on people and all you're going to speak over them is life. Life in Jesus' name. Joy is making its comeback. It's making its comeback. Depression is being broken. Freedom is coming to the people of God. We thank you for it. Lord, can these dry bones live? Yes, they can. All across the building, if you wouldn't mind standing up this morning on your feet. I just, I just poured a lot out into you this morning. I'm an old-fashioned Pentecostal believer I believe in laying hands on people I believe in praying for people I believe that that's, that works I can counsel you until you and I are both sick of hearing counseling but God can take this thing in just a few moments and give give you beauty for ashes beauty for ashes. God, give us this morning in someone's life beauty for all of the ashes. Even if you lit, even if you lit the match and you burned it to the ground, he can still give you beauty for your ashes. And he will. Anyone who has a need to pray, come on, altar workers, y'all come on. Altar workers, come and minister to people. Anybody who has a need to pray, come on and find a place. We're in no rush. We're in no hurry. Let's lift our voices this morning in worship. Those of you that are prayer warriors, I know you're here. Start praying now. Anybody who has a need for prayer, come on and find a place. If you're dealing with something, take it to the Lord. Don't take it to the door. Take it to the Lord. Let God go to work in this room here this morning. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.